Asthma suffers around 10% of world population, and half of these cases occurs after age 20. It is called adulthood onset asthma. Most common symptoms of adulthood uh, onset asthma is wheezing, shortness of breath, and chest tightness. It has attacks, which is called asthma attacks, and asthma attacks are characterized most commonly cough, air hunger, shortness of breath, dyspnea, wheezing, and wheezing is high-pitched whistling sound. And even asthma has attacks, between attack periods, also some symptoms occur in 60% of population. These symptoms are, most common symptom is chronic cough. And people with asthma usually says that they have chronic cough, which, which is more prominent uh, at night and at morning. Uh, also, breathing difficulty uh, and air hunger and such uh, breathing discomfort occurs between this period when there is no asthma attack. So, especially after COVID-19, when long COVID is so common, many people have asthma and many people develop asthma uh, and these symptoms like uh, discomfort during breathing, chronic cough, which is not associated with COPD, commonly is asthma symptoms. And how can we differentiate if it's COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or asthma? There is some similarities, which, which we can say that they are similar in some way, but also different. For example, both of them can have um, chronic cough, but uh, they have different symptoms also, and we will uh, discuss them. Asthma usually occurs at young age. Even adulthood asthma occurs in younger age. But COPD usually occurs after 40, 14. And it is associated with smoking. Uh, asthma usually reversible. So, person has... Uh, time with symptoms and time with uh, his pulmonary functions are better, his breathing is better and his breathing is normal uh, or almost normal. But in case of COPD, symptoms worsen over time and it's usually constant, not, not important improvements. Of course, uh, COPD has its exacerbations and uh, recovery periods, but uh, this, uh, this type uh, of reversible process is more prominent in case of asthma. Asthma has triggers. Triggers can be exercise, triggers can be cold air, or it can be allergic, uh, it can be dust, uh, and such uh, triggers is not common in case of COPD. Of course, in COPD, um, uh, constant uh, smoking or uh, getting some uh, irritants is common also here, but there is no prominent triggers. And in case of asthma, we have such triggers. And in spirometry also different. Uh, in case of asthma, Spirometry is normal or around normal, near normal. In case of COPD, spirometry uh, and uh, FEV1, uh, FVC ratio is decreased. That's also important difference. Uh, and th uh, this is a forced expiratory volume in one second and a forced vital capacity. This ratio is decreased. And what is risk factors for adulthood asthma? Uh, most common risk factors are allergies, smoking, obesity, respiratory infections, genetics, especially after COVID-19. This 
uh, respiratory infections are stronger of course and uh, of course it's uh, it's possible that um, COVID-19 infections causes damage of our uh, airway systems and that's why asthma is more common because inflammation component is very important in case of asthma pathophysiology so inflammation which is caused by infections are very important of course allergy reaction is important but allergy is more prominent in case of childhood asthma and in case of uh, adulthood asthma um, in, uh, inflammation is more, more important and now let's say what is treatment and uh, what we can do to stop asthma or manage asthma now let's talk about treatment first line treatment of asthma is beta agonist short term beta agonist uh, in case of asthma attacks also first line of treatment is inhaled corticosteroids which is used to manage symptoms and uh, reduce asthma attacks second line treatment is long-acting beta agonists, leukotriene modifier, and uh, theopilin. Also, here is important, uh, important things that, of course, asthma should be managed um, by classical medicine and by conventional treatment, and you should never use herbal supplements as a substitute of conventional treatment but we have some researches uh, in case of of uh, Boswellia serrata and ginger that they have uh, anti-inflammatory actions and they improve lung functions in case of asthma so we have some researches uh, but this uh, research is, is not uh, big enough uh, to implement this treatment uh, in guidelines or in official recommendations. But these two herbal supplements have uh, anti-asthma effects and they improve lung function. So they are important, I think. Also, magnesium and vitamin D have its role uh, because uh, sometimes deficiency of vitamin D increases risk of asthma and asthma attacks and magnesium also important um, muscle for muscle working properly in trachea and bronchial tree and uh, there is also techniques for example pursed lips technique uh, and diaphragm breathing technique which uh, which can use uh, as an um, additional uh, treatment or additional procedures for alleviating symptoms of asthma and pursed lips technique means uh, when you inhale uh, slowly with your nose like this and then hold breathing for two seconds and then exhale with pure lips like this slowly and breathing with diaphragm means when you see it of course your uh, your shoulders and hands should be relaxed and one hand on uh, chest another hand on abdomen or stomach and you should inhale with nose and you should feel this inhalation and your stomach should rise like this and you should slowly exhalation and your uh, your stomach also should be pressed in this case depressed during inhalation stomach should be raised during exhalation uh, stomach should be pressed 
that's the idea of diaphragm uh, breathing. This technique also helps uh, asthma cases. That's all for today. Uh, thank you for your interest. I'm Kote. If you like my videos, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.